May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Seeking to know God has always been the way we human beings have responded to uncertain times. If there's a time to focus on God's nature, it is now at a time when our world has been haunted by the global pandemic of coronavirus and the war in UK Ukraine. To focus on a complex doctrine may seem to be a little out of place. Today, we speak of the one God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. God is one and indivisible, yet we profess to believe in God the Father who made the world, in God the Son who redeemed us on the cross, and in God the Holy Spirit who lives within us. They are not three gods, but one God. It's not hard to understand why Christians have been accused of undermining the unity of God by this very doctrine we honour today. It's a stumbling block that separates us from other peoples of the book. Muslims and Jews both believe in one God and yet fail to understand the concept of the Trinity. Not really surprising because it took 426 years before the early Christian church agreed on and recorded what we now claim when we repeat the Nicene Creed. The New Testament doesn't explain the doctrine of the Holy Trinity, yet over the first two, two centuries of Christianity, reflection on the experience of faith in Christ led the church to develop this doctrine. We see glimpses of it in the very earliest ways Christians prayed. Think how often Christian meetings all over the world are brought to a conclusion by saying the grace. Those words which come straight from St. Paul. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. This isn't the doctrine of the Holy, Stri Holy Trinity, of course, but it indicates how God, as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, proves inseparable from the way Christians have always lived their life in Christ. The grace, as we call it, developed within the first 15 years after the resurrection and the Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost. It's still used regularly by millions, perhaps billions, of Christians across the world today. We should remember the Athanasian Creed says that God is incomprehensible. We cannot get our minds around God, yet that creed reminds us that God is more perfectly one and united than we can possibly be or imagine. In God, there is a mutual relationship of love which is more outgoing, perfect and complete than the love found in any of us in our relationships. There are only two verses in the Bible that seem to suggest a full Trinitarian theme. Matthew 28, verse 19. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And in 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. If you had the chance to have a chat with Jesus, I wonder what you would ask him. 
I don't expect you would ask him to explain the doctrine of the Trinity. The man in our reading today had just that opportunity. Having caused mayhem in the temple with the money changers, we are told Jesus was the talk of the town. Most of the Jewish authorities had begun to see Jesus as a threat, but one of them, Nicodemus, became very interested in what this new rabbi had to say. Jewish people believed their salvation was dependent on the learning and keeping of the laws set in stone by God and given to Moses. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, probably a member of the Sanhedrin, a prominent man in the community and almost obsessed with the study and the keeping of Jewish law. So Nicodemus crept out at night because he dared not jeopardize his reputation by being seen talking with Jesus. Nicodemus began by giving Jesus a compliment. He said that Jesus must have been sent from God because no one could do the things he did without the power of God, the great I am. Not responding to flattery, Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God. Nicodemus was expecting the Messiah, a new David, sent to reclaim the kingdom of Israel on earth. But he soon learned Jesus had come to usher in a new kingdom of God, not physical, but spiritual. Nicodemus, imagining his mother giving birth to him now as an old man, was totally confused. His mind was set on the physical world, but Jesus was talking about the spiritual. The kingdom of God was a new way of thinking and a new way of seeing for Nicodemus. The kingdom of God is within you. Nicodemus could not understand. He had spent his whole life keeping those physical laws to, to gain entrance to God's kingdom. But he was rapidly beginning to realize this way just wasn't going to work. We still see the physical world full of violence and hatred, injustice, pain and sorrow. We see the effects of the physical world in the legacy of the coronavirus, the violence in Ukraine and the effects of rampant inflation every day on the news. But the kingdom of God is a new world, a place of peace where the streets are paved with gold and the light of Christ is always around us. It is then through spiritual not physical means that we will enter the kingdom of God. On this Trinity Sunday, as we ponder the nature of God and his kingdom, we too have unanswered questions. Some theologians prefer to speak of creator, redeemer and sustainer rather than the traditional Father, Son and Holy Spirit. For myself, the trinity of persons is completely indescribable by using human vocabulary. We have all heard the old metaphor of H2O, ice, water and steam, but that simply doesn't work. Jesus used the metaphor of birth to describe this change of mindset from the physical world to the spiritual. Echoing Nicodemus's question, what must I do to enter the kingdom of heaven? Well, love God and love my neighbor. Do we get this doctrine of Trinity? In our Christian journey, we learn more about God day by day as we walk with Jesus throughout our earthly life. 
walking in the power of the Holy Spirit and onward into the kingdom of God, our Father, by the grace of his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.